chase race number six headed us to Watkins Glen International in New York for the running of the New York Islanders at the Glen. Our second elimination race of the chase, four drivers will be eliminated. It'll be down to just eight competitors competing for the championship. Speaking of competitors, a couple of them right off the bat, as you saw earlier, just spun out on turn one already. Is this really turn one? Is really that slippery for those drivers? Anyway, Dion Scun was on the pole, but Eric, yeah, Eric Powers in the 21 would easily try to take the lead away from the two. This is the old configuration that, that was used at the Glen before. They added the S-curve uh, to make things a little safer. But this one has a, lot, a little bit more exciting racing to it. I do apologize if it's lagging in the beginning. The race lagged on me for the first couple of laps. But it does get better at the end, trust me. It does get better and uh, get much more smoother at the end of the race. But anyway, Eric Powers took the lead away from Dion Scott. As Scott has to battle for second under the caution flag. Our first caution comes out today at the Glen. Eric Powers will lead us to the caution, and Dion Scott's barely going to get second. Oh my goodness, a big spin in the back. As Ziggy Marley involved in the spin, so we'll get to that later. But first, you the wreck that happened on the earlier in the lap. Dan Coffey, ooh, Jackie Tang, and teach you hard hit on Jackie Tang. And that's not going to help him in the chase. He was on the bottom of the chase, and well, that Jack the Tank would be done for the, for the race. Here's the spin out I shot earlier on the first corner. Angel Navarro and um, Nick Alton and Chris Washer. Not only really good start for those drivers. Zeke Marley gets held up by the um, 94 Ross in North Atlanta. You saw that, that final turn spin we saw in the back near the start finish line. Oh no, Brandon Nichols. And another driver, I think Jordan Newman, got right into Marley near the start finish line. Marley went up for a couple flips, but he would be all right. On the restart, though, Eric Powers lost his lead. He lost his footing on the first corner and accidentally skipped over it. Uh, so I apologize if it skipped over that one. But here's P.J. Williams getting the lead. He got the lead away. Jordan Davis trying to battle for speed. For the lead, he gets blocked by Williams and nearly gets turned by Kyle Collins. Collins was right behind him in the bumper, nearly was about to turn him, but they were able to keep it together. As they come down to the near the final couple corners, our second caution of the day comes out just in time for P.J. Williams to hold off over the 30. Ooh, contact between the two. They kept it together. Man, they kept the racing very close. And here's the incident with Eric Powers. I accidentally skipped over it, but he must have lost his grip on the first quarter of the track, as we see many other drivers also. Nick Alton again. This is the second time in a row he gets loosed on the first turn of the track. Not sure what's going on with this car today. Anyway, we had a big pileup ahead of them. Stephen Coleman the third was in the pileup, and then moments later, as you see Kyle Stinger, he just tried to drive through that. And Leia Walker though was spun as well. Leia gets hit by Ian Dutta, and Walker goes for a flip. A lot of smoke covering the um, or the first S curve in the track. So, wow! Already we see a wreck fest here at the Glen. Well, it was gonna expect it was expected to be a wreck fest given that we, um, well, this is a different portion of the blend. Anyway, Benjamin Wiles having some trouble on the first corner already. Already some problems, and now he stacks, gets in the wall with Mitchell Riggs. Sacks running down the fence, and Riggs would try to drive through. Sacks gets stuck there, he would be out of the race. Already on that corner. They, they go through the S, they go the long straight away, and our another caution came out for the 12, um, R.J. Bishop, and he's won by Christian Folks of the 75. Ooh, wow, nearly. Those drivers nearly got right into them. That was a close call. Roman Rail trying to get the third, second on the restart. He got loose on the first turn. Everybody's been getting loose on that first turn. I'm not sure why that always happens. But it happens sometimes, so, well, again, we're going to have to deal with it. Well, moments later, Roman Rail got into some trouble on his own. He got spun by Navarro and Sean Harpo, and Nick Alton was in it. It's like the first time that Nick Alton was in a rack, like a spin or a rack, and he had some trouble. It seems that he can't get his car together today at the Glen. It's not helping him in the chase at all, and hopefully it's not going to take a big hit in the chase. Anyway, another spin out came on another restart. Dion Scott, the pole center, got spun by Luke Walker. 
Thank goodness no one else was involved. Oh no, the front team Shelly in the grass. Not sure what happened. I'm not sure why he's riding the grass. Jasmine Acosta is following him, and the other driver is following him. Then after that, we had a big wreck between Jordan Neiman and Kyle Singer. Singer goes upside down a little bit, and then we had another one with Sean Harpel and, and R.J. Bishop. Bishop's day gone from bad to worse. Same for Sean Harpel. And we have a major wreck fest. Man, oh man, how many was that? Five cautions? But anyway, ooh, Guerrero, ooh, no, it was Mason Powers in it, Kate Cope spins, and on the first corner, man, it's been a messy, messy race here today at the Glen, a lot of drivers wrecking for no reason at all, and they're not letting anything go, and look at this, a big spin ahead, Navarro got hit on his way down here road, and we had a bit of a spin, but I think it was Jasmine Acosta got spun. That will bring out a restart with four laps to go. Hopefully a four lap dash. Hopefully we can stay green throughout. But anyway, TJ Williams has been leading through all the wreckage. And Eric Howard, Jordan Davis, unfortunately not so lucky off that first corner. And they became the latest victims of that third, of the slippery first corner. Here comes Connor Green Valley for second against Kyle Collins, trying to narrow, trying to narrow P.J. Williams' lead. Williams has been leading every lap since the first restart, since he took the lead away from Powers. Green is now trying for second against Collins, side by side, coming through the final corner. Here they come to town with just three laps to go, and they're going to have to come and pit road. And they give up the lead. Connor Green takes the lead with two laps to go. Nicholas Guerrero is now in second. Unbelievable. PJ Williams, he had the lead for most of the day. And had to come down parallel though with two laps to go to relinquish his lead. White flag is out here at the Glen with one to go. Connor Green still your leader. Nicholas Guerrero right behind him in second. These two are going to battle out for the win. And it's obvious that a chaser is not going to be lucky here at the Glen. It's going to really set up the points after the Glen to see which four drivers will be eliminated will be eliminated from, from contention. But Connor Green still trying to win. He won it. He won the race. He won a race at the Glen previously in season seven, so he already has experience in the Glen. Now he's looking to become a two-time Glen winner. Guerrero is our last season's champion. He was out of the chase early, but he's looking for the win. If he goes down below, down the corner, off that long straightaway. But Connor Breen able to put a block on the 24. He's just got a few corners left for Breen to survive, and he's got a safe fuel as well, just in case he has to pin on this lap. Here he comes down the final corner, and these two still trying to save fuel, and looks like Guerrero's not going to have enough time to get to Breen. And Connor Breen off the final corner is going to win the New York Islanders at the Glen. And a wild and crazy unexpected finish for a wild and crazy unexpected race. It's his eighth career home one cup series win and his second at the Glen. As I said, he won him in season seven. So now he's a two-time Glen winner. Guerrero gave it all he had, but he'll have to settle for second. And Kyle Collins was the highest chaser in fourth. He was actually in the bottom four coming to the Glen. The rest of the field, the bottom three were Jackie Tan, Dan Coffey, and Dylan Young. All were chasers. Will that change the chase picture forever? Connor Breen goes to celebrate, and now we determine which eight drivers will advance to the next round and which four will have their championship or hopes and at the Glen. So here come your point standings heading into the next round. Alrighty guys, here come the points. Here are the drivers that will make it to the next round. Mason Powers, Roman Rahal, Jacob Waller, Kyle Collins, Nathan Hudson, Benjamin Miles, and Ian Dutta. Those drivers will move on to the next round in the Eliminator round, where we'll be down to four drivers after three races. We do know Dylan Young, Kate Culp, and Jackie Tang are eliminated. However, we have a tie for the eighth and final transfer spot between Dan Coffey and and Nick Alton, each having 2,044 points. 
to break the tie here are the tiebreakers that we use uh that's new uh it is new i'm going to introduce you the tiebreakers we use for the chase um if in the event of a tie like this but anyway in the event of a tie we will use these tiebreakers the first one is the driver with the highest finish in the round that is tied and only that round only that round chase races will count into the standing and whoever has the highest finish on those three races during that round will advance to the next round if that is tied if they have the same best finish from that round then we go to the second tiebreaker and all chase races will be implemented that means that's the round but the round or rounds before it will be added to the second tie break and the highest finisher the driver with the highest finish during those rounds in the second tie break will move on to the next round if that is still tied the driver that led the most laps throughout all the chase rounds combined all chase rounds combined whoever led the most laps will move on to the next round if that is still tied the wins rule will be applied to the driver who had the most overall wins throughout the entire season will move on to the next round and if all else fails then the tie drivers both those tie drivers will be allowed in the chase and will be adjusted to add them in the chase into the next round that is in the chase <laughs> but anyway we'll have our first we're gonna do our first tiebreaker and that is the driver who had the highest finish in the second round of the race it's only the second round only Nick Alton's highest finish during this round was 22nd but Dan Coffey's highest finish was 11th and that means Dan Coffey is going to advance over to the next round via the tiebreaker Nick Alton is, will be eliminated from chase contention and that'll set up our eight drivers moving on to the next round so it's going to be Powers, Rahal, Waller, Collins, Hudson, Miles, Dutta, and Coffey competing for four spots for the championship at Zen Joltis. But first we'll have to deal with the final three race rounds starting at Talladega Super Speedway, then it will continue in Indianapolis, and then it will conclude in the Super Snack 500. And after the Super Snack 500, the top four drivers in points, all eight drivers will have their points reset to 3,000 points each. No bonuses are given since none of the chasers won during this round. Um, whoever has the, whichever four drivers have the most points after this, after the next round, will be the final four that will compete for the championship at Zen Joltis. The highest finisher of the four in that race only will be your champion so that's our eight drivers set up for the next round we hope to see you guys at Talladega that'll begin our third and final round the eliminator round so join us then we will see you at Talladega